Last time Marquette and the Whitetails met, well, the story was flipped. Wisconsin was ranked number nine, but Marquette went on the road and straight railroaded us. In the first half, they were killing through the air. Uh, in the second half, they pretty much ran down our defense with Larry Powell. Justin DiRoberto couldn't answer, throwing a late interception, which sealed the game for Marquette. But now, three seasons later, it's been three seasons since we faced them. We faced them again in our first top 10 matchup in this rivalry as number one Wisconsin State takes on Marquette University. And here we go. We have never been this good, both teams in the same matchup. So this is gonna add a different element to this rivalry. They are led by junior quarterback Nicholas Anderson now. The really, really the bread and butter of this offense though is the run game. Anderson is a dual threat guy, but he doesn't have the elite speed of a dual threat quarterback, but they have an amazing running back in Josh Douglas. He is only a redshirt freshman. Like I said, for the next three to four years, he's gonna be tearing it up. He might declare early, you never know, but he is an amazing running back. He also is one of their top receivers as well. He does remind me of Saquon Barkley. I think he is probably going to end up being the best running back when it's all said and done in this entire series, unless we have another running back that's amazing. But I think that just looking at his uh, trajectory of his career, he is going to be amazing. But really what's making this team great is their defense. They have the number one ranked defense in the nation for good reason. A ton of defensive linemen are first rounders. And just looking at them, they actually have the number four total defense actually, not number one. But number three in rushing defense, we are number one in rushing offense. They are number 49 in passing defense. So we did move them to our side of the conference here this season because geographically it just makes sense. We added NIU to our conference as well. So let's kick this game off. And this is the first game in three years since season five. As here we go, we have a different looking team now. And out comes Marquise Moore for his second start at quarterback. He's gonna start out handing the ball off to Cole Laka Laka. And that is a gain of four yards. So now second and six this time, Marquise Moore hands off Julian Gonzalez and there is the defensive front. And Tyler Sands was there, Tyler Brown was there, Mike Sands and Tyler Brown. And now they make the stop in the backfield, making it a third and nine. First throw to the right side, it is Michael Bradbury, the sophomore. That's a gain of 12 and a first down. So running our speedster, Jasper Sweet in motion. He gets the handoff, he gets a block and he will get about eight yards. And take a look, they are gonna call holding on this one and it's gonna come back. And here we go, first and 15. Marquise Moore hands off for the first carry of Apollo St. Vincent's game and he does get six yards on that one. And we can't get anything going on second down, bringing it to a third and nine. Moore facing pressure and it's right there unblocked and we did not see him coming. Brian Williams off the edge and they do force the punt here on the first drive. So here comes Nicholas Anderson, the junior, at quarterback. Here he is, his first throw across the field to the right side, and he did get hit hard on that one, but a gain of 10 yards. He's okay, he stays in the game. So here is Josh Douglas, his first carry. He has a big hole, and there is a trip up by Ali Myers, but a gain of 28. Look at this, I mean, he was gone on that one. And now here they are with a fresh set of downs here. First and 10, running the tight end in motion. Counterplay to the right side. Perfect blocking, and Douglas will break free. He's gonna score, that's a touchdown for number 25. The red shirt freshman, Josh Douglas. Oh my goodness, this is gonna be a long four years defending this guy, it's seven nothing. So here we are back on an offense. Here's Marquise Moore on the first pass, trying to scramble out, but their defense is just fast, you saw that. Marquise Moore has 88 speed and 99 acceleration. He still was caught. Third and eight, throw across the middle to Jasper Sweet and it's just overthrown. That was actually a pretty tight window to throw to, but he was our best target. And we punt the ball again. So here comes Marquette back out on offense. So here they are running a man in motion after the punt. Anderson, clean pocket this time. He's gonna try to throw the ball. He gets hit on the throw by Frankie yeah. Kai and it's picked off. That's Ali Myers and he has the first turnover of the game and nice hit by Frankie Kai. If it wasn't for Kai getting that hit, 
That could have actually been a deep pass, but the hit definitely affected the throw. And here we are back on our offense after the turnover. Marquise Moore has the quarterback power to the left side, and that's a gain of three yards. So now third and seven this time, running the triple option handoff. That's Julian Gonzalez, the junior. He is fighting forward for a gain of 13 and a first down. So first and 10, now Apollo checks back in. A handoff up the middle, and he is going to pick up another gain of 13 just like that. So two big runs here for both running backs. So now we're on the opposite side of the 50. Here's a throw to the right side. That is the true sophomore, Ramel Williams. He gets going for a gain of seven yards. So handoff, Apollo up the middle, only a gain of two on a third down carry. So now fourth and one. We can make this field goal, but why not go for it? Already down seven in a rivalry game, and we will pick it up. That's Apollo St. Vincent for nine yards. So now first and ten. We give it to Michael Bradbury on the jet sweep. Look at this blocking, and he does get to the outside and cannot get around his own offensive player. He gets tripped up. Gain of nine. That was a touchdown. So now second and one, throw, and it's going to be picked off on the quick slant. And wow, that one was just severely overthrown. Marquise Moore just misses him. I, wow, I mean, that's a big-time overthrow. That was Maurice Jackson that was going to. And Marquise Moore doesn't look good throwing the ball to start this game. So here is Marquette back on offense and almost a sack and maybe even an interception on that one. David Wyatt gets there. And now it's a second and 10. Throw out to the left side. It's going to be Josh Douglas, who is a top receiver for Marquette as well. And that's a first down there. Now they get some breathing room as they move it to about the 30-yard line. Here for a second and one. Running the option to the right side. It's going to be a tackle in the backfield by Anderson Reed, the junior. And now we get it to a third and six. Nicholas Anderson, he's going to try to buy some time and run to the right side, and he will pick it up. Tackled by David Wyatt, and it's nine yards in a first down. I said that he was a dual threat quarterback. He can run a little bit. The next play is a throw to the right side. The back of running back car breaks a tackle, breaks three, and he gets about a gain of 26 and a first down. Now they're at the 40 yard line. So now Nicholas Anderson, quick throw to the right side, and we tried to jump that one with David Wyatt, but it's a gain of 10 for the tight end, Eric Wilson. So now here is Douglas, another hand up up the middle, third and one, and look at him. He just fights forward, gain of 10 on that one. And a first down, he is showing something. He might be one of the best young running backs in the nation. So here is Douglas, carry to left side, and he will get run down, but not before he gets stopped inside the five. And now here they are, first and goal. Play action fake from the goal line, and he does throw across the middle, and it's caught by one of our former recruits. That's Darren Trevor, the tight end. And he gets in 14 nothing here for Marquette. And they look good on offense and even defense. And we have to answer. So six minutes left here in the first half. Handoff. Apollo St. Vincent is throughout the next drive. He picks up a first down on that carry. And then moves us to about the 42. Marquette sends the blitz. We move to the right. Jasper Sweet. Oh, my goodness. Another one of these plays where our guy gets tripped up. Jasper Sweet has 95 speed. He would have been gone on that one. So now second and three, a quarterback power. Look at the blocking on the outside. That was Michael Bradbury on the left. And he, he was just sealing up the edge on that. And it's a big first down run. And Marquise Moore doing it with his legs this game. So here's Apollo St. Vincent, another carry to the right, left side. And that's going to be a tackle for about a gain of six yards. And now third and one. We're going to hand it right back to him. But he gets hit in the backfield. And this defense is just amazing. Tyler Brown in there for another play. And now we let him to go for it. Fourth and two. Apollo is going to fight for the first down marker to about the five-yard line, gain of 11 yards. He's already got 73 yards rushing in this game. So first and goal, a handoff once again. Vincent fights forward. It's a touchdown. Way to fight forward for that one because I did not think he was going to get in. He did. It's 7-14. to 14. We cut this lead down to just one score. So here is Nicholas Anderson on the next drive. Why not? Just keep it, giving it to Josh Douglas. He has another big hole to the right side. Nice one-on-one -on -one tackle by Ali Myers. But, man, Douglas is running all over us his first half. So first and 10, Anderson throws to the left side. He's got Jack Bunny, one of our other former recruits. And that's a gain of five there. And now they get it to about the 50-yard line here for a second 
in five. Two, two and a half minutes left. Here's a throw to the right side, Bruh. and that should have been an interception and probably a pick six the other way. David Wyatt watches that one fall right through his hands. So third and five, another carry. Josh Douglas, this time he is stopped. And Tamari Jamison was there. Justin Royal was there. Everybody was there. And now we have the ball back with two minutes left here in the first half. So here is Marquise Moore, this time scrambling out to the right. Nobody is home, and he's got a lot of room. He gets tackled in the third level, and that's a gain of 31 for Marquise Moore. There we go, getting out of bounds, even stopping the clock. So first and 10 this time, clean pocket. Marquise Moore rolls to the right now, buying some time. He's going to throw across the middle, and that's a perfectly thrown pass to Maurice. Highlights Jackson, who doesn't get the ball as much as he's used to getting. But that's a gain of 34. Marquise Moore is only four for 11 to start this game. So here is Apollo St. Vincent with a carry to the left side, using the stiff arm and fighting inside the five, 12 yards. He's almost closing on 100 yards as well. So second and goal, a carry up the middle, and he's going to pin ball, pinball for about a gain of two yards, and that brings it to the three. Third and goal as this clock winds down inside of 15 seconds. We run highlights Jackson in motion. We give it to Apollo St. Vincent on the triple option. We probably should have kept that one because we had a, probably a touchdown. And instead, we will settle for three points and go into halftime. And it will be 14 to 10 as these two top 10 ranked teams are making this a game. And what a game it's been. Here we go, 14-10. Now, unfortunately, uh, this only happens maybe once every 200 episodes here on my channel at all. But the second half got corrupted when I was recording it. And I like to record by half just because sometimes I like to take a break. I have, you know, I'm doing other things. But, man, I, I'm, I'm kind of mad I, I missed showing you guys the second half. I'm sorry about that. It won't happen again. Like I said, this is the first time it's happened here in this series. I mean, it's been 100-something episodes now. But you can see in the second half, we actually did outscore them 14-7 to in the third quarter. Highlighted by an 85-yard touchdown pass to Jasper Sweet. He's always good for one of those. And then in the fourth quarter, with three and a half minutes left, Maurice Jackson had a 52-yard pass. And that one was actually on a third and long. It was actually a really good throw. It seemed like Marquise Moore definitely calmed down in the second half. He could not throw the ball at all. And maybe it was that defensive front that Marquette has, but he definitely settled down and started to make some throws in the second half, and it ended up equating to a win as we came back here and won by three, 31 to 28. Like I said, I apologize for uh, you know not having that second half. It does happen once in a very good while. I don't expect it to happen anymore in this series, and we do come away with the victory, though. But Josh Douglas, I mean, this guy... He ran for 100 more yards in the second half. I mean, 18 attempts, 238 yards. I mean, this guy is going to be the best running back in the nation. I have no doubt about that. Remember, Robbie Richardson was for a little bit. And we had, I mean, it definitely added a lot to this series. We had the fortunate, we were fortunate enough to play him three times in his career, Robbie Richardson. Now we get to play Josh Douglas probably three or four more times. Who knows? Uh, but at least three more. But Apollo St. Vincent, 128 yards rushing in this one, two touchdowns. He's closing in on one of the best seasons we've had from a running back, and it's been quiet, to be honest, really quietly. He's going to be a 1,000-yard rusher probably at the end of this. And then Jasper Sweet, another game with another touchdown for him, and Marquise, or Maurice Highlights Jackson actually gets a touchdown as well. I believe that's actually his second touchdown on the year, maybe first touchdown, to be honest. But in the second half, uh, at the end of the game, we did score with three and a half minutes left, and then Justin Royal got a turnover, an interception in the fourth quarter, and that did seal the game along with the Charles Davis sack. So that's how we did win this game, and it was a good victory all around. Honestly, the second half was really, really good, so I'm pretty mad that you guys missed that. 
So let's look at the rest of the standings and looking at the top 25, look who's here. It's Wisconsin. Are you kidding me though? Seriously, because we did not de promote them to the Big Ten. Because remember, we have the relegation rules where the top two teams in the conference get promoted to the next conference and the bottom two teams, if you're a power five conference, get demoted. And Wisconsin has not been to a conference championship in the American yet, but look at them this year. They are on their way, it looks like. I mean, their their schedule is pretty cupcake, to be honest. Indiana looks like the best team they face, and they're only 5-2, and two, and then they're not even ranked as well. And Wisconsin is 7-0. and oh, What a start to this season, and they got about four or five games left to finish it off. It would be amazing to see a Wisconsin-Wisconsin State National Championship. I mean, that is probably a dream scenario here in this series. But USC is number two right now, and they look really good, especially with big time offensive output. I mean, they have a win 42 to nothing versus a five and two Cal team. I mean, that's the type of team that this USC team is. They do have a tough matchup versus Texas, so I do expect them maybe to lose that one. Who knows? But looking at the rest of the top 10, uh, top 25, Houston is seven and zero. Oh. And Houston's another one of those interesting cases. I actually played with them uh, in the American Athletic Conference, but then they started to suck. Well, I think we put them in the Big Ten maybe one year, but I was like, well, that doesn't really make sense geographically. So I put them in the Big 12, and they literally could not stay in the conference. They got demoted. Then they got demoted back to the American, could not stay in that conference. They got demoted down to the Sun Belt, and now they're undefeated in the Sun Belt. It's just funny to see some of these teams do this when I uh, promote and demote them. So looking at the Heisman watch, and Arkansas is another one of those surprise teams now within the last couple years. Remember last year, they were actually top five at one point, and they went undefeated until about like week 10, I believe. They were actually number three in the nation. I think that was their highest ranking. Cody Richards is their top running back. He is on top of the Heisman race. I believe he started the season there as well, so he's just basically kept that spot. But it's just interesting to see these teams who are now good here in year eight here in this franchise. So let's just look at our recruiting board. And I highlighted before uh, the recruiting episode or during the recruiting episode that Colin Kurtz and Jamarcus Levine committed. But now we have two more commits. Maddie Pitt, a good guard. But now the big one here is Dominic Holly. He is our first five-star prospect to commit to our team out beating or beating out um, Wisconsin. And you know what's funny about this is that I was – a thousand points behind in third place for this guy and all of a sudden i started putting 500 on him and now he just commits i mean he was just waiting for us it seems like to go after him and he has committed now he is going to be a preferred walk-on because he is a computer generated guy so he will suffer three minus three in his attributes for receiver skills but we do get the two teammates noah herndon and grady boozer to commit i'm excited to develop those guys those are only two and three star prospects but they are really good i can't wait to play with them Unfortunately, we do lose out on Shane Bauer. Now, this was a big hitter for us because I definitely focused on skill positions this year in recruiting. And honestly, you know, missing out on him is going to be big because we're missing Coco Bamaya and Marquise Dorsey next season. They are both seniors on the outside at cornerback. So cornerback could be a little bit of an issue next year. I guess we'll have to see. We'll definitely have first year starters out there. But looking at our remaining schedule, we have Iowa, Nebraska, Minnesota, Cincy, and NIU. Man, Cincinnati 0-7. They are horrible since losing Robbie Richardson, it seems like. So this season is already winding down a little bit. And we're 7-0. Let's see if we can finish the job. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I've been working hard for a minute The ones who don't deserve it seem to be the ones that get it The ones who speak the truth never get the recognition But the ones that act foolish seem to get all the attention It don't matter though, yeah And it don't even matter though, nope